Okay, in the early morning light coming through the open garage door, we can see here uh, that I have been uh, busy, busy, busy this morning. Now, when we left last night, you saw most of the parts completed and um, <clears throat> sort of fitted into place. Let's go back over this again. Um, there's my porch uh, support. Yeah, okay, and I've painted it up. I got as close as I could. Now, I need to age it. Because we can see this is, this is uh, you know, dirty and, well, it's 100 years old. So we're going to have fun sort of roughing this up a little bit and trying to get it down to where, you know, it looks similar to what's there. We can see here. Can you see that? I know the camera's back, but there's the uh, porch support. Okay. Oh, that's going to get glued and... Um, I may drive some uh, wire brads through there. I see that's the way this was originally built. And then <clears throat> we've got our masonite roof here. Also, once again, remember I told you how excited um, these pieces here are masonite as well. We can really see, well, I guess that's, that little bit is off camera. I'll zoom in on it. Um, but yeah, and these were just spare pieces that were laying around this workshop. My father had saved for some reason. Okay, so on this goes, and then there's our there's our bracket right up in there. Okay, it fits, fits very nicely. There we go. That's how it's going to work. I know my hands are are in the in the way. Now, one thing I've got to do is. Remember when I cut the points off, uh, really the roof should extend all the way down and I, I, there wasn't enough of it. So I'll fashion something. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, going through bits and pieces, I've got an old pump organ key here. Um, uh, an accidental key. I'll take this black piece off here and then just take the key and I'll probably split it in half because it's the it's the exact look at this it's the exact length see that so I'm gonna I don't know what I'm gonna do it doesn't really matter uh, it'll be, it'll be very plain but there'll be one one piece there sort of to cap that off I think something like that just plain and simple okay and then here are my clothes pins for uh, the uh, front step. Now what I've done with these, as I told you, um, painted them as well, got to age them. There they all, there's the backs. Okay, I'm sort of cheating and not filling the back in. But the fronts are filled in. And they'll stand here like this. I went ahead and painted these green <clears throat> rather than brown. I thought all the trim is green. So, the porch, oh, that must be. Okay, pardon me, I'm sure that was somebody telling me that my 1976 Volkswagen Beetle, which I owned 40 years ago, has lost its expiry, uh, the warranty has expired. Not quite 40 years ago, I was about 19. Okay, <laughs> so back to this. I've got to drill holes to put the railing in. Now, I know when you look at this, you may say, well, that railing isn't quite to scale. I'm using what the gentleman used. This is These little dowels are what he used uh, on the staircase inside, and we know that because a few pieces of them survived. That's how simple it was. He might... Oh, and also, because I've got these two holes right here, we know that that's all he had. Thanks, Thankfully, because we can see... There are two little holes, and they went right in the wall like that. Someone asked me, and I actually thought about this, splitting a clothespin in half and having half of a post here, which would be a little more decorative, 
but you can see there never was anything like that here. So I'm going back to the way he had originally done the house and he just stuck the rails into the wall like this without putting any decorative wood post here. So we're gonna go back and do it the way that he did it. Um, and I'm saying he, assuming that it was most likely a father who made this for his daughter or daughters sometime in the early 1920s. Okay, let's get this all together again, and then I have to um, age this green and sort of uh, uh, probably go back to um, at least a brown that somewhat matches the trim here on the house. Okay, let's do it. Okay, now the next thing we've got to do while the pieces to the uh, see, uh, uh, awning here are, are uh, drying. Okay, the next thing we've got to do while the uh, porch ceiling is uh, drying is replace this broken step. And um, so we can see here that this, this was broken off. They, uh, they over, there's a slight, over, well, not, not much quarter, uh, about an eighth of an inch maybe. Um, so I'm going to take this piece here of masonite and cut that and, and uh, <clears throat> repair that. Because whenever the, uh, in history, when the, when the front porch was ripped off, whoosh, yeah, uh, this was ripped off as well. And not quite so bad up here. I think we can get away with that. Mm -hmm. And then there's a close-up of the holes in the wall where the railing comes out. And it looks as though uh, to, recreate, to recreate the stucco of that era... Oh, pardon me. I just dropped something on the flow. Let me pick that up. Okay. I'm getting focus. It looks as though, I believe... Some kind of adhesive was sprayed on this old house. Um, and then he, it was covered in sand. This is just sand all glued on there. He, he might have driven down to the Jersey Shore to get the sand. Who knows? We have sandy soil here in South Jersey. That's why the blueberries do so well. But it's just sand that's glued on and then painted to give it this uh, old stucco. And I, as I told you before, look at all of the screws. He didn't need to put one, two, three, four, five. He didn't need to put six, I'm getting focus, six screws on this trim. There must be a hundred screws in this thing. I believe they call this uh, like half timbering, is that right? It, to, to give it this style. 
this uh, uh, Tudor style. And then a jadeite tile right here. Now the roof is covered in paper. Uh, some type of a green, uh, a green paper. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Actually, I'm not redoing this. I'm not going to redo this. I'll clean it, but I'm not, I'm not repairing, I'm not doing anything to it. But the plywood he used has been covered. We can really see up here. Okay, whatever this green paper was, almost like desk blotter. It might have been desk blotter paper to cover the masonite. Mm-hmm to give the roof a, a beautiful green, green look. Yeah. And it's all, we can see it's all water damaged and everything here. I'm, I'm leaving it. There's no way I'm going to recover this. As I said, going to clean it and that's about it. Yeah. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, let's take a break for a minute. You know, when I'm working, I always have several projects going on at one time. <laughs> and I'm curr currently waiting for paint to dry, and there's nothing more boring than watching paint dry. So I went back to this lamp. Now, thanks, Carol. You probably thought I forgot. Carol sent me this lamp uh -huh, a year and a half ago. So the cherub in the middle had been antiqued. Do you remember those antique paint kits that people had in the 60s and 70s? And everybody was antiquing things. Um, this was covered in, in that. The patina on the base is original. We're going to zoom in on this so you'll get a closer look. Um, but the shade on the top was inappropriate. It was some uh, sort of 1970s ball type shade if I remember carefully. Now this is just sitting here so let me take it off before it breaks. Now this is a period shade which could be gas or electric and at the time this lamp was made uh, I did a lot of research on this lamp and just as I suspected it could be found both electrified and as a gas table lamp. There were such things. This was made during a time when people were sometimes suspicious of electric lights and some of the fixtures in those days were both gas and electric. 
And this particular model could be had as a gas or an electric lamp. Of course, when I got it, it had been converted to, uh, it had either been converted to electric or, as I said, was made that way. This brass uh, fitter here is old. I may keep it, I may not. I'm still debating that. So, uh, the cherub now is stripped down to the base metal. So we've got to apply a patina to it. The candle, the thing that the cherub is holding, um, the torch is brass. And then we come down here to this beautiful base. Wow, how ornate is that? And thank goodness this had never been repainted. That's the original patina on that base, and it is beautiful. I'm doing nothing to that. So it took me a while to strip the cherub here. Let's turn the cherub all the way around. There's a lot of detail. And we'll see when we get back here. Um, well, this is, okay, hold still, dude. There's a little hole right here where the small, little tiny electric wire would go through. And then it would come out here and it would snake its way up to the light bulb socket. Actually, um, it would come out here and then go into this brass torch right here. I don't think you can see it. So there are lots of little holes there where the electric wires went. Um, that's the other reason why I'm almost completely certain that this piece was sold as an electric lamp when it was new because um, of the holes for the electric wire. I need to get very small gauge wire for this, which right now I don't have. Mm -hmm. But when I do that, then we'll get this thing back together again. And what a beautiful glass shade in opalescent glass. I know this makes you nervous. It kind of makes me nervous two, but I think we're okay there. Okay, let's just back up for a minute and let you see the whole thing. It's going to be very nice. So I'm going to continue to work on that. Am I selling it? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, we've got it up there. Now I'm just using wood glue at the moment. No wire brads or screws of any type. And I've created a little shim here out of these old pump organ parts to sort of hold it in place. I don't have any clamps at all. I'm doing this very organically, as you can see. Now, ignore the fact that I haven't aged the roof uh, or this piece here. Didn't age that yet. I'm going to go in and do that once it's all set. So we're going to let that dry and uh, move on to something else. Oh, who left the front door open? Mmm, I don't know. The porch is still drying. I've made some progress here on my uh, railing. All right, I've got my clothes pin and I've drilled holes there, of course, and we've got the posts. These are glued in. Yeah, okay, these are not, they're just sitting in there. But I've got to figure out, see, it's difficult to get the angle, you know, so that it doesn't look cattywampus. All right, so that's gonna sit on there like that. And then my other post, all right, here's the other one. Now, this is going to go down here. And I need to get it to where... You see, I can't, I can't drill a hole. We've got to angle it down. This is the difficulty. And I don't... I need six... I need two more hands. Okay, that's not going to... All right. Let's see here. I'm just making this up, folks, as I go along. There is no manual. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So we'll we'll drill the holes here and then bend this down to where it fits in there. Yeah, I can't I can't use that. Okay. And then we'll get it on there. 
I think it's going to be okay. Uh, all right, let's see what we can do. Okay, everyone, that's it. I'm finished for today. I'm happy with the way that the front porch and the railing turned out. I think that I was able to replicate what was probably there originally based upon the ghost marks that remained. Now, uh, if you're new to this series, I'm going to link all of the dollhouse restoration videos below because I've been getting questions, you know, where did you get this and are you going to put furniture in it and whatnot. And I've actually addressed all of those questions in previous videos. So not to be repetitive, if you get a chance, you might want to go back and take a look at those old videos and you'll kind of see the progress. Next, the electric lighting system. Yes, I'm making some headway with that. Uh, I have to finish cleaning the carpets and all of the windows. And then I'm going to experiment with a little bit of freshening up of the exterior woodwork, the half timbering that's on the house. And um, trying to get the show and hut furniture that was originally uh, in the kitchen. But thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope that you're enjoying watching me having so much fun working on this old dollhouse. That's it for now. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying wait for the cat and so long for now. Meow.